this video, we're going to talk about counterboard holes and a little bit how the about how the tools are selected. So here on the screen, I have a piece of stock that's one inch thick. So I'm just going to go to top view and tell it I want to create a new feature. It's going to be a hole next. Here I'll tell it it's a counterboard hole, and I'm just going to go with these default values: one inch through quarter inch diameter, quarter inch deep counter bore, that's three eighths in diameter. So I'm just gonna say finish. And then I'm gonna change the location just because I didn't go through the wizard. I'm just gonna pick it, put the hole right there. Well, let's take a look at the tools. Notice it picked a number five center drill, the quarter inch drill, of course. And the counter bore is a 312 end mill. So remember it was a three eighths diameter. Well, it picked the 312 because it does the same thing with the counterbore that it does with the pocket. It looks at the diameter. By default, it looks in the tool crib for the largest tool that can contour that to get it to the right size. And the reason is, if we go look at our machining attributes on the tool selection tab, the first thing here is you will notice is that for counterbore, we're, we told it to use an end mill, so that's why I didn't actually use a counter bore. If you have automatic selected, it would first look for a counter bore. If it doesn't find one the right size, then it will then choose an end mill. But we typically don't use counter bore tools on the CNC, so it defaults to end mill. And also down here, because it says tool percent of arc radius is 98%, what it actually did was looked at calculated 98% of 375 then look for the biggest tool that could cut that. So again, that's why I chose the 5 16 end mill. So if we quickly play to the next operation, here's the, let me uncheck this. There's the center drill, here's the drill, and then a single step, and here comes that 312 end mill, which you can also look down here on the right, lower right, and see 5 16 end mill. But basically it goes down, contours, and drops to a second depth and contours. So if we take a quick look at the NC code, this is just a standard Haas post. Notice here, it drilled it, or I'm sorry, spot drilled it, drilled it with a G83. And then if we look down here a little bit lower, we will see where it came down with the 5 16 end mill, contoured, dropped a little bit deeper and contoured again. Well, we would rather just use a 3 8 end mill and just do a one shot deal. So I'm just going to double click the feature to open it up, go to the counter bore, just scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to choose this 3 8 end mill instead. Of course, if we simulate it, there's spot drill, there's drill, and then if we single step, here comes the 3 8 And basically what it does is it makes a one shot in and up. If we take a look at our NC code, we will notice that it spot drilled, drilled, and then, because we have a 3 8 end mill, it's smart enough to know that I'm just going to do a G82 with a dwell. So it just does one shot down and one shot up. That's a little bit about how that works. If I would have chosen a smaller end mill, it will just, it knows that it's got to create the 3 8 diameter. So it would make the appropriate passes and depths to, no matter what, create the 3 8 by a quarter inch diameter counterbore. 